Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, European crossover webinar. We're seeing the euro uh, move up a little bit higher, so new, new highs of the day. It actually rallied up to about 970, pulled back. Uh, we had that resistance at 74, and now we're moving up towards that uh, level. We've seen crude come off again as Brent made new lows. I think that's kept the pressure on WTI, but I, I posted a chart yesterday. There's some key weekly support at 36.56. But it's pretty hard for a market to put a bottom on a Friday. So we'll go in and uh, move into the uh, charts right now. Let's take a look at where we stand here on the euro. So we're coming up here to this 974 right here on the 30 minute. Uh, we've got the 984 here on the two hour. Let's just go on and pull this over here, and bring these side by side. So we're right into the 38% right here at 970. But like I said, we had just set this high, well, this return high yesterday, I think it was. So, you know, if we're going to blow through, we'd probably blow through a little bit higher. We'll probably want to challenge this 984. I mean, market could go on back off from here, but we've already done some work right here. We'll see if all we're going to do is just hit a couple of stops. But if we're going to hit a couple of stops, it seems like we'll be able to press it just a little bit more. The only problem I have is that we've already been to nine. We've already been to 970. So taking it out by, and we've already come down here, you know, to the 930s. If we'd only, if we'd only drop down to let's say the mid 950s or low 950s, then I could see where the market just takes out the high by two, three, five ticks, pips, and then turns around and goes south. But from here, from 970, we've already dropped down here to, you know over 30 pips. So my guess is we'd want to punch this a little bit higher and at that point we just have to decide how much more we think it can go. I mean if you want to just go and place a short going into the weekend, but like I said with, with crude and Brent under pressure, we've got the spoos at 2026 right now. Um, it's going to be a little, you know, we could maybe squeeze a little bit more, you know, with uh, if people, you know, end up wanting to get out of positions before the weekend. So I'd be more apt, in, in light of the run we already had into the 30s, I'd be more apt to let this thing run a little bit more. Maybe we'll make a run towards this 989. That might be a little bit closer. We can see here that 984 would be the 50%. We can get rid of these here. And we'll pull up the fib here on the 30 minute. Might be easier for some of y'all to see. See, I'd be more apt to do business around 989 if you want to just go on, because like I said, we already dipped into the 30s from 70. So, you know, and if we're pu pump, pushing this out, and then you got crude, well, it's, it's off of its lows, not that much. Uh, the pressure is still going to be on coming into New York. So they may want to really goose them a little bit here, and that's my thinking here is that uh, I wouldn't be as apt to short it right here because we already made this run up to 70. And actually it came and tagged, the, if you think about it here, it perfectly tagged the 38% right in here. So we've come down here to about 38, 37. If we're punching here, we may want to squeeze them a little bit higher. But like I said, if it was a... You know, if it wasn't a Friday, maybe you can just say, you know what, screw it, I'll take a stab here. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll settle a little bit more if it makes a run here. But being a Friday with, and crude and Brent right near the lows, Spoo's on its lows, Spoo's at 24 and a quarter. We got some support at 22 and a half. 
they may want to just keep the pressure on and just goose them a little bit more. Uh, so like I said, I'd be a little bit careful. We do have a buy signal here on the 30 minute if you see here. So we got the buy signal here on the EMAs. You know, obviously we had this run up here, which, you know, on the pullback, you have to question. You'd want to, you know, when you get this buy signal, you on any pullbacks, you'd want to be looking to cover as opposed to load on or necessarily let them ride. Anything can go on and happen. We've talked about that before. But if you get a crossover into a buy signal, then you've got to be thinking that the momentum has shifted and they're going to be buying. So on the sell-offs, you don't want to be pressing them. You're going to be looking for areas to go and pull back or, or take your profits. And you can see we've got this support here. We've had that marked out before, the 939, which is the bottom of this purple zone. You can see all the touches, and that's where the market found support. Took it out by about you know, two pips, you know, and then we found support, but we're on the buy signal. So you want to go and play it from that direction, or if you're going to play it from the short side, uh, you want to – sell it against key levels, which was a good area here, this 970 to 38%. You already had the buy signal, so you want to be judicious in where you come in on your levels. And then on the pullbacks, you want to look for the support, and we had the support here at this 939, the bottom of this purple zone. You're not trying to push it much lower. Anything can happen. Market could just turn around and roll over. We get some bad news or a headline. But I'm just saying, technically, that's the way you want to go in and play it when you've got the buy here on the EMAs. I'd be more comfortable shorting this thing, <clears throat> but in light of the, the, the way this, this is set up, coming up here to the 70s at the 38%, and then selling off a decent amount, and we're back up here, I'd be more apt to just sit back a little while and let him prove himself with the backdrop of uh, WTI and Brent making new lows and the spoos on its back heels. So I'm like, I'd rather play the cautious game, especially on a Friday. You know, I, I'm not really crazy about trading on Fridays. I, I'm a little bit more careful with my positions. Uh, if I'm going to be scalping, I'm going to be scalping, you know, in the, you know, I prefer scalping in the crude oil market as opposed to coming in here with the euro one where they may just kind of go and squeeze them a little bit going into the weekend. So we're still maintaining the bid. If they wanted to go and take them on the offer, they could have already seen this thing already scooting into the 62, 63s, and we're just holding it. Doesn't mean we can't pull back. What I'm just saying is my my thoughts would be that the market is more apt to push them a little bit further, okay? And I'm not willing to go in and take on that risk, especially, like I said, if I have to hold them over the weekend. And if they – I want to come in at a good price, just like when I came in a couple of days back, <clears throat> and I sold them, and I thought it was a pretty good price, 957. They squeezed higher, sold them again, 1002. I'm thinking, well, okay, you know, and then I, I, that was it. That's all I was going to do. And then it was late in the day, and I'm thinking, well, this is really getting overdone. I'll keep one on. I'll put one on just to see what happens. If it makes new highs, I'm out the, out the door on that last one, and that's that one I put on the 1032. So you want to be judicious in where you come in so that um, – you can get the most, you know, you can have, put yourself in the best position to go in and take advantage of that. So right now, being a Friday with crude and Brent on their lows, the spoo's on its lows. We're already here at that support at 22 and a half. <clears throat> Looks like we've already ticked down to about 22 and a quarter. Then I'm just not going to, like I said, uh, percentage-wise, I'm not apt to go in and just step in right now here especially after they've already, they've already visited this area and pulled off a good chunk. Like I said, if it only pulled off into the high 57, high 57, let's say 55, 53, then I could say, okay, they're going to just pop up some stops and then roll over. But they already, have, they already pulled back 30-some pips, so I don't, I don't like that then. I don't want to go in and, um, you know, like I said, I'll play. I'll just sit back and wait. If I want to really dance a lot, I'll just go in and jump into crude right now. So... I'm just going to go and sit back because if we close on the week, I mean, if we keep them on the bid and then they close around, well, not close, but they get up to 985 and they get a foothold, then the market's going to be thinking, oh, maybe they're going to press them. And that's what you're seeing today in crude is that it's hard to put a bottom on a Friday because they know that they've got the, the bulls or anyone that's long, they've got them really on their back heels and they're just going to press them. And so no one's going to go in and fight that trend. And then people are thinking, whoa, what a, what a horrible weekly close is going to be. So it's much easier to play the short side in crude. So with that unknown, especially what you're seeing, the lowest price since uh, December of 2008 in Brent, 
then the market's more apt to push it. And the thought is, is then with the the uh, with the energy, the crude sector being on its lows, then that's putting a big pressure on the spoos. And you know how like the the e uh, the euro at times likes to play the risk off type play. I just don't want to put myself in that kind of situation. I don't like the percentages unless I see the levels that I like. And that's what, you know, saved my bacon the other day. It's short at 957, okay, fine. They squeezed them higher, 1002. I'm like, okay, I'm all right with that. And then the cherry on top ultimately was at 1032. But that put me in a position to make the most of it on the way down. And the one that I got out at 957, I ended up getting out at 943. Didn't even make that much money on it. But the others that I was more judicious of where it came in really helped me. And so that's what I'm saying. You, you, you know, like I said, we might see this thing fall back into the 40s. You're thinking, well, I should have really shorted it. You know what? If you want to short it, fine, go ahead and short it. I just don't like the backdrop of the environment right now coming into a Friday. David says it looks like a cup and handle. I don't see it here. I don't see it. And I already tried that cup and handle. I was it about two weeks ago on a Friday. Uh, that was when the euro was trying to. What was it trying to? No, it was in the sixes at the time. And like I said, that was the first time I ever traded. I don't see no cup and handle. You would see a cup, but there's no. I don't see any handle here. I guess that you're, what you're looking at is this, and then a pullback here. But it's we already. You already come up to this high. So if if we got rid of this part, then I could say, yeah, that looks good. And then to me, I think the handle's too far to pull back. It shouldn't pull back that far. If you looked at this, I mean, if you threw it on a 15-minute, you might be able to see it a little bit clearer. This is more like a freaking bowl, a bowl and a long handle. That, that handle's way too long. It shouldn't have pulled back that far. I mean, I tried that one time. You, you can't force... Force patterns. That's the wrong thing you ever wanted going to do. I mean, I tried that cup and handle for the first time ever, uh, you know, about a couple of weeks ago. And it didn't pan out. But the handle can't be that far back. That's crazy. And then you put that on a on a 15 minute. I mean, because this to me negates it right here. This pullback here. I'd rather send the market because then you can see the bowl here. It doesn't mean we can't move higher, but I don't. I don't believe that that is. The, the pullback's too far back. Pullback's all the way halfway down the, the ball. Whoever saw uh, a handle like that? I don't like people asking me for forecasts on stuff. I really don't like that. Don't ask me. Seriously, I'm not going to play that loser game. And that's probably why you're always putting yourself in a big, big hole asking for crazy things like where's it going to be two days from now, three days from now, where's it going to be on on Thanksgiving of 2016. I don't like that stuff about forecasts. Forecasts are for losers, and I really prefer people, uh, you know, don't be asking me those kind of game, get stupid questions. And they really, I think they really are. Someone say, where do you think crew is going to go today? You just play the levels. Just, that's like me saying, I, you know what? I think that the euro is going to go to 10-12, and then the whole, then you end up having to defend. But in your mind, you're thinking, well, I mean, I said it was going to go to 10-12. I, I guess I got to short it right here. You need to let the market go in and play out. Stop asking for forecasts. That's why you put you put find yourself in trouble all the time. You know, I mean, you know, look, because I, I, you ask this forecast, somebody say, you know, and I'm not going to say the person's name, but when we rallied up here, the same individual said, do you think we'll ever see 110 lower again? Lower again? I mean, that's just silly. <clears throat> that's why you don't, you're basically, you're selling the, you're selling the bottom and you're buying the tops because you have no perspective. You have to have perspective. Stuff doesn't go up forever and it doesn't go down forever. And you have to have perspective and, and saying s silly things like, well, what do you think is going to go? Well, I think it's going to go to 9, I think it's going to go to 889. Then it's going to go in and turn. Let the market play itself out. All you're doing is you're playing, you're, you're playing probabilities and scenarios. That's the way you have to trade. That's the best way to trade that. If you come in with four, now you can look and say, you know, I think we're overdone. You know, 
110, it looks like it's pretty good here, 1043. I mean, if I thought the market was going to, here's a good, good example. If I thought the market was going to go to 1044, I certainly wouldn't have shorted it here on the way up at 957. But like I said, you have to go on and, and look at things from a broader perspective and say, okay, well, I think this is a good area to step in. Which I thought it was at 9:57, and the market. That's what I'm saying. You never know when the market starts pushing higher. It starts squeezing people. It's like this on this move here, and you said, "Well, I see it going to 8:19 and reversing." No, the reason I had such a good day that day, I thought it was overdone. But I said, "Okay, if it if it goes to this level, if it, and I have said if it takes out 8:19, now we're going to 8:69, and I ended up taking a short against it at 8:72." And then we go, <coughs> we pull back, and then we had, and like I said, I had a very good day because I wasn't forecasting prices. You can say a market is overdone. I thought it was overdone at 10:02, and we went all the way up to 10:44, and I shorted 10:32. And then if I knew exactly where the bottom is, I wouldn't have been covering yesterday at 9:62 and 9:44. I'm just saying, all you're doing is playing probabilities. It's it's just ridiculous to be asking for forecasts of where prices are going, unless you're one of those nuts that plays uh, those was those binary options. I mean, Timothy says it says it perfectly, and what's the weather the next day? I mean, that's just crazy. If you if you start asking for forecasts or you're looking for forecasts, you're simply setting yourself up for failure. You're simply setting yourself up for failure. You can't be you can't be loading the boat. Eventually, you get knocked out of the game. It's not trying to. Do, I'm just trying to make a point. It's the same individual who got short at 112 and really was uh, was really underwater when the when the market went up to uh, almost 115. If you remember at that time, I was shorting against 114.77. You, you can't be doing that. And the same individual who did really well when I mean it was a couple a couple of weeks ago, and I said I don't, I don't think we're going to break any lower, and sold a bunch of crude oil puts. But if you if you load the boat at every corner, one of these days you're going to get whacked. And if you're asking for forecasts, it just means that you're really not learning anything. You're just trying to just just look at areas and say, okay, I'll sell, I'll sell this. And and the same. I mean, I'm just making a point here is I'm not trying to lash out anyone, and so that everybody learns a lesson. The same individual loaded the boat here and was really under trouble. Was in a lot of big trouble here. I mean, you can tell when someone loads a boat. When we get up here and they say, do you think we'll ever see <clears throat> prices below 110 ever again? I mean, that's crazy. And then 12 hours later, we're already sub 110 and, we're, we're, and the market's just drip, 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 dripping. If you, if you load the boat like that, you're always putting yourself in a, in a situation of fear. And if you do that, you can't read the price action. That's why when you're trading, people trade demo, which I, like I said, I don't think you should trade demo uh, other than to see if a platform you know, works. Even when I went to a different platform on this TT, I still didn't trade the demo, uh, but I should have. I made a few mistakes, but that's the only time you really want to run, use demo because demo gives you a false sense of security because you're thinking, okay, I'll do this because you don't have any money at risk. At the same token, when you load the boat, all you're seeing is, Ticks and going against you, and all you're just doing is you're just magnifying your PL. And you're saying, oh my God, now I'm up 50, now I'm, now I'm down 200, now I'm down 280, now I'm down 490, now, and you're not looking at the market. All you're doing is you just you ultimately end up focusing on your PL. You're just drawn to that because you can't help it being drawn. Whereas if you don't load the boat, you can look at market action, you can look at it from a, a from a detached viewpoint. I mean, I wasn't happy about it, but when it was up in the 1020s and I was laughing at, laughing at about Euro, I wasn't thrilled about it, but I'm just saying if I loaded the boat, I'd be shaking in my boots. You can't, you can't be doing that. You're, you'll always be that same trader then. Even if you're making a lot of money, all you, it, it's, a, it's just a matter of time before you get blown out of the water because you're betting, you're betting the house on every turn. And, as, and some, it's just basically playing Russian roulette. That's exactly what you're doing.
And the only reason I'm making a point of that, and I'm like trying to bust bust uh, one trader's chops, is it's the same individual that always asks me, "Where do you think it's going to stop? Where do you think it's going to go?" And I would say, "Yeah, I think it's going to stop here." And the same individual bets the freaking house. He either makes a killing or he's like, you know, in in desperate desperate dire straits. And you'll never learn to trade. And that's the whole idea of this webinar is to help y'all learn how to trade, not to just give away trades. That doesn't do you any good. You want to go and learn how to trade so you can make these decisions. You can make these decisions on your own. I mean, just like, you know, like David was saying, he goes, hey, I see a cup and handle. I really don't see it because a handle, but got to give the dude props. At least he's, you know, maybe if this thing takes off, he's like, yeah, there's my thing. I saw the cup and handle. You know, you can't be betting the boat. On this, I mean, you can make a lot of money if you if you go if you go all hardcore, and at the same token, you can really lose your rear end, and and that's not the point of the game because it's it is really very hard to learn how to trade. But if you can stay in the game long enough, just like anything else, if you can if you can work on it long enough, you may not become super super good, but you can become okay. And okay, if you can make okay amount of money, that's all you we're trying to go and do here. You have to be within reason, and we're going to switch over to the crew. And when I say that, I mean, I'm not saying it like as if I'm the omnipotent know-all. I busted accounts before. I know what, it, what it's like to load the boat. Thinking well, this is the bottom and you're buying it, blah blah blah. You have to have you kind of have to look at things like, uh, well, maybe it is and maybe it's not. It's the same thing with crude yesterday. I posted that chart with 36.55, 36.56 as um, key weekly support, and the market came down. It went down right to 36.56. It popped off, and then the market came lower. Uh, took it out by two, no, to about four, four ticks, and it went, and then it popped right off of that. And you have to look at the market like, okay, well, if it holds this area, then it can maybe go here. Because the key thing is nobody knows where the market is going to go. All they're doing is playing percentages, and quite often what you'll see is, is you know, the market will go with its momentum. If the momentum, obviously, in this case, is lower, the thing with crude is it's very volatile, so people like it because it you can either make a lot or lose a lot, but you have to be careful and you have to just look at things. When you're moving in a market like this where it's trading almost scared, all you can do is trade the technical levels. I said that yesterday. You know, just flip them. That's it. And all you're doing is, like I said, with that 36.56, I still have that in mind, because in, my, in the back of my mind, because it's a key, uh, key uh, weekly level, I believe. Uh, some decent touches there. So as we broke lower this morning, I'll give you an example here. It looked like we had a chance to go higher, okay, until the market, you know, we're getting above this 36.65, and we start really scooting a little bit. And we got up here, and the market ran out of gas. So when you look at the market overall, you're seeing everybody's thinking, whoa, I think we might have a bottom in here. If that 36.56 holds and everything's looking okay, hey, you know what, looks like we might do, might, might do something here. And this is on the 30 minutes. So we pull back in here, and the market essentially set up well, Marcus always going to want to take the other side in the sense that it hurt the people on the opposite side. So what the market was looking at here, and this on a 30-minute, we don't have it set up here on a, on a five-minute, although we could go on and take a look at that. Well, we'll go and do that. Let's go move into a five-minute. So you can see here we're holding this 36.56. Because remember, that's that key weekly level. So, so the market... When it comes, it makes this run up here and it pulls back. And it goes, well, it looks like it's going to fall. But it doesn't, but it holds the 36.56. So all the traders are doing are playing the percentages. So they say, you know what? And you go, it's holding the 36.56. It could have broken lower. Uh, you know, I'll cover. And some people might say, you know what? I'll go in and get long. And I'll just put my, my stop at 48. Because if, in case this 56 doesn't hold. Because if 56 is holding, and everybody's looking at it and saying, whoa, it's, it's holding here. 
It held right here. We could have broken lower. Wow, we held right up to 56. Probably the market has sold out. So it's on a five-minute bar, and it closed at 64. She thinks, so like, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll buy them at 36.60. So the market, it closed at 64. We come back down, and we get as low as... 59. Okay, so you might have had a tough time getting 60. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you had to just bottom at 62 or you bottom right to 64. So we launch up and go, okay, I'm going to give the market a chance. I'll put my stop just below this area. So you put your stop at 58. So now the market is closed at what? 68. Not a whole, whole lot. And you go, you know, it looks like so far everything looks good. We can really start to launch. Maybe this 36.56 is really going to go on hold for, for, for the week overall. And that's all we do is we trip some stops. And next you know, we're 74, we're 78, and we end up topping up here at 36.84. If you remember yesterday on Twitter, I, I mentioned that that 36.83 was a pretty good uh, key volume area. Okay? So the, ultimately, the market runs out of gas and loses it. But when it loses its 56, that tells you that it's going to look at it from the downside. Because now when it loses a 56, everybody goes, well, that's bearish because no one's going to come in and say, well, you know what, now I'll, oh, they, they, they lost 56, I'll buy it now, 48. No, everybody's trying to get the hell out of Dodge then. And so that's where the market presses until we can, uh, until, and the scenario now is we've we lost the 56, we're going lower. And that's what the market does. It just keeps on pressing. It's just a matter of how far to keep pressing. And then the market sets itself up again. And then you, you look at it and say, okay, well, it didn't take out 36. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's holding 36.20. And then 36.20 becomes a marker. And then people say, okay, I'll buy it. Uh, if they want to buy it, I'll buy it. And I'll just keep a stop just below the 36.20. And that's the way you're going to be scalping crude or how I've seen the way that the game, game is played. Obviously, also, I do use my exponential moving average on the five minutes. You can see here that we did get the sell signal, so that's the pressure. Now, on the upside is going to be right here, this 36.44. Is, that's going to be the marker now. Remember 36.56, which is still a key overall marker because it's a weekly support. But right now on the short-term basis, this 36.44 is the marker. In a sense, it's going to be bearish. So if you still bought it and you said, hey, I'm buying it here, I'll just put my stop just below the 20, then any moves towards the 44, you want to get out. I would suggest at the best 41. Maybe be on the safe side, 39. So if you got in here, if you got long here, 25, then grab yourself 14 ticks, and you're just playing that, and you're just playing that game, and it just keeps the game keeps. Basically, it's like if you're playing a game of chess, or you're playing a game of checkers. Okay, you lost that game, and let's say you're, you're, you know, let's say it's a Saturday, and and you're sitting with your uncle or something like that. And you go, yeah, we're playing, we're gonna play, play. I'm gonna sit over here. And we're gonna play checkers from you know, 11 o'clock to probably like 4 o'clock. We're going to take it, take it easy. It's a great spring day or summer day or whatever like that. So you lose the first game like, okay, now let me start the next game. You're not thinking anymore overall about the last game. You, in the sense is, the analogy is, you're just in a new scenario now. So now your marker here is 20. You're buying in here and you're going, this is, this is a key level here, which is this 44. If you want to play it from the long side and you're saying, I though I do know that we're still on the sales on the sell signal here, but I'll take them the next key marker is a 44, but tell you, tell you what, I'll take them, I'll I'll leg out of them or get on them at 36, 38, just to be on the safe side. And let's say you bought down here at 25 or whatever. It, like right now, the market, all you're doing is you're scalping it. And these are I'll scalp when there's a little bit more heavy volume. Right now, I think the market's tired. We made this run up here. It ran out of gas. Now the market slammed really hard, and now you can tell the market's kind of quiet. Not a whole lot's happening. So if not a whole lot's happening, don't try and squeeze the last freaking tick out. Just go and say, you know what? I'll be happy with 38. They'll probably pop, them, pop a few stops here. If you're trading the, the mini QL, um, the mini CL, the QM, and you say, okay, I'll, I'll take them out at 37 and a half. I'll be happy with 37 and a half. And the same thing like the big, the big, big contract. Okay, I'll take them at 38. I'll just exit out at 38 because it's quiet now. You can see that you're not seeing all this wild activity because the market it, it looked like it was going to fall. We held here, so they set them up for a, a move higher. And now that the market couldn't do it. Now they said, oh, we lost 56. They're going to press them lower. And that's what they did. Now we got this other big game here. Now it's intermission time. And the market's sitting here. There's just not a whole lot of action happening. That's where you look at it from an ultra, ultra short-term perspective. But then from a bigger perspective, we're going to look at it on the 30-minute and we'll see, hey, let me, let's see what this market can do. Can it hold this area? You're going to wait a while. And then you're also going to look at the two-hour close. 
and we've still got that big marker, the 3656, to see if, hey, look, if that market can reclaim 3656, that could really set us up to potentially maybe like a hammer bottom. That stuff you're going to have at the back of your mind, even though you might be scalping, and right now we're at 36. That's where you got to look at it. You're just looking at stuff in probabilities. Don't be making forecasts. If you make forecasts, you're setting yourself up for failure. Straight up, you're setting yourself up for freaking failure. Anyway, it's time to go and take a break. I'm not going to run it all the way through. Uh, we're going to go and take a break, and um, we're going in. And there's your 38. We just got the 38 right there. And that's the way that we would go in and set it up. I'll put it on a five minute, and then we'll go in and um, take a break. We'll catch you back here in seven minutes. And I just showed you what you want to go and do. Obviously, we have this marker here, but I said on the QM, 37 and a half, on the big contract, 38, just get out. I'm just saying, just playing percentages. You're not acting like you, you're the all omnipotent one. But anyway, that's all. Uh, we'll go and take a break, and thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover. Okay, uh, y'all, and uh, welcome back to the uh, European Crossover webinar. And as I told you, you know, if you were playing the game on the crude oil, on the big contract, uh, limit yourself out at 36.38. If you're playing the QM, uh, the, the mini crude oil contract, limit yourself out at 37.5. Boom, here we are. And basically, I just told you how you would set it up if you're scalping this on the, on the five-minute chart. I've already told you, when I do the webinar, there's no way, no way in frickin' hell I can go on and, and, and uh, trade because, uh, like I said, I, I keep my eyes fixated. So there's no, I mean, you know, like I said, if I'm putting on positions that were holding for days or whatever, that, that's a whole different ball game. We've got the euro, it's still up here, sitting up here at 969, 970, so it hasn't relinquished its run up here, and we already discussed that. But let's go on and jump out of the crude also. I threw, you know, in the, on the break. If anybody was looking at it, I threw the quick fib on there. 36.40 was there, was at the 38%, which kind of tied into what we were already looking at, which was, and I told you the market got quiet, so um, we were looking for a move. Like I told you, when to play it from the long side, you're just looking for, or if you just got wrong, you're playing it as a scalper, then just going in, as I said, limit yourself out at 38 on the big contract, 37 and a half on the QM, the mini crude oil contract. And like I said, that's confluence with the 38%, which, which I don't even know at the time. But like I told you, the market's tired now because we had set ourselves up after holding the 36.56. That's a key weekly level. We came up here when we pulled back. Then anybody was, you know, scalping the market, they're saying, hey, look, it's holding the 56. What I'll do is I'll just put my stop just below 48 in case it did, just dip real quick. And they got long, and then we had this big run up here. But the market lost itself, and this also confluenced here with, and we're going to get rid of this here. And we're just doing a quick recap for anybody that's popped in right now. So, and I use the exponential moving averages on my five minute. I have it on the five minute, but generally this chart is the 30 minute. But you can see here that we now we've got the sell signal. So you know that the pressure is on on the crude, and plus the idea of losing 36.56. Anybody who is playing the long uh, long game on here, and you know a lot of these people, they probably took some of these profits on the way up here if you're if you're scalping it. But you know there might be some people that are you know buying it against that and going to hold for a while. So they know the market is going to be under pressure, and it's just the way. Now that we've lost this scenario, it's like it's like in you know when your kids are playing war or whatever. So you you gave up this area, and now you got to go down and test the whole new area. And no one's going to step in and be an idiot and go, okay, now I'll buy it at thirty six forty six. No, they're going to let the market. If even if you're bullish, going to say, you know what, we've lost that area. Now we got to basically we'll fall back, basically that you know playing the. We used to play the old soldiers of war scenarios. You fall back to a new, newer area to go and defend that area. So you're not going to try and defend it now after they just rolled you. So you're going to run back in here, which is just what the bulls are doing, say, let them have it and see how far they can push it. And so you knew the market was going to stay under pressure. And then now I told you was on the way back up, you're thinking, okay, well, it didn't take out 36. Your new marker now here is just 3620. 
And once again, you're just scalping it. So you're just getting along here, 25, 24, 26, 27. And like I said, Dan, we talked about this. We were trading this lower 30s or whatever. And I said, you know, you can't get a whole lot out. You're scalping it because the market's tired now. Because we had this run up, it looked like we could really launch. 36.50s hold, 56 is holding. That's our key weekly support. Hip hip hooray! We're going. We're going to rally. We're going to finish the week up good. And then the bottom falls out. So now the market goes, and everybody starts running to the other side of the door. And everybody's running outside the door. So they start running this direction. So now they go, okay. Well, now it looks like the market's going to call the hold. Okay, now let me get long again. So you get long. But like I said, the market we were talking about, the so market is tired. You can't expect a whole lot of it. So that's what I'm saying. If you get long, if you got long, you're trying to play, if you're trading the QM, the mini crude, you limit yourself out at 37.5. Or if you're trading the big contract, limit yourself out at 36.88 because we said this 36.44 is the marker to turn it back to bullish. And that's the way you're going to go and have to trade it. So my whole thing that we jumped into this is because Someone was asking me for a forecast. Where do you see crude going? And it really ticked me off because it's the same person that's always asked me for a forecast. And it's not that I'm mad at that person. I'm trying to make an example or a point is that you can't keep always looking for forecasts. You're basically, you're playing probabilities. Just like we just played this probability right now. And we said, you know, 36.44 is the marker. It might make it up to 36.42, but you know why be there? Be on the safe side. Limit yourself out at 36.37.5 on the mini, 36.38, and the high was 36.39. You'd just come out okay. You're out of your long. You made your money. Boom. And or if you were aggressive and took a short, but I'm just saying is that's the way to go and trade it. You have to look at these trades as probabilities. That's all they are. Stop trying to forecast where the market's going to go and go because you're setting yourself up for flipping failure. I mean, maybe that person's not happy about it, but I'm saying it's better you be pissed off and still have your account intact than all happy and then be totally blown out the water because this guy always bets a freaking house on every trade and you're just going to be playing Russian roulette. So Susie says, I love your rants. I've only been listening a couple of weeks, but I'm learning so much from you. You give top class advice, and the same with Blake too. I really appreciate. It. Thanks a million. Well, I appreciate that. Like I said, usually I'm trying to rant, and and but I'm trying to make a point. Is that you know the whole idea of the webinar is so that you can learn how to trade, and hopefully you can learn from the mistakes I've made, because I blew out three accounts of you know way back. What I'm saying I blew them out until I started to learn the importance of the key thing was risk management, and that you can't be betting the house on stuff. You just can't. I mean, your, your whole thing is you have it's longevity to go and stay in this game long enough. If you can stay in the game long enough, you'll learn enough to be okay. You can see here that the sell signal, we got that sell signal on the 30 minute. Notice how we talked about this the other day. It kissed it here, and look, it kissed it there. So you can see that the downside pressure remains. And that's why I'm saying I like to look at different, different time frames. I'll look at the two hour and the 30 minute. So you can see here that it's, the pressure still remains and probably would, is keeping the pressure because then once you got would be essentially, I wouldn't really call this a shooting star because it, it's not going up to newer highs, but it's certainly a bearish, you know, bearish bar. Uh, you could almost say it was almost like a, a graveyard doji, so to speak, but you can see that and, and then this being still on the self signal and we came up here to almost kiss it, it just tells you that the pressure remains on the downside. That's why if you try to play it long, Side, when we talked about the scalp, don't try and get too much out of the market. If, you, if you're just scalping them, I said this yesterday, you know, someone was saying, I look for lower prices. And because I said the 3656, and we rallied off of that. And I said, I go, you know what? There's many ways to use that. You can just use it as a marker. If you get below 3656, you're going south. I go, just use it as a marker. I go, essentially, this is trading. Just flip them. I mean, sometimes you want to hold trades for a lot longer, but what I'm just saying is you have to look at the market, what the market is giving you or how it's trading on how to, uh, how to do that market. Uh, Dan says, I shorted dollar yen last night at 22 and, and 22 and 12. Awesome. I almost top ticked it. Would you look to cover or can we test it? 121. Thanks. So, yeah, that's why I saw this question. That's why I brought up the dollar yen. We actually made, oh, my God, yeah, a fantastic field. That was up against my, my bias pivot, which is 22.14. Man, you did exceptionally well, Dan. Uh, I'd be looking here at this 2130-ish area. They may try and take, let's take a look. Man, that was a heck of a doggone trade. And I have not been paying attention. The only 
thing I've been trading really was euro and crude. So I wish I would have paid attention. I had the chart up. I just didn't even see that we even got to that level. So that was that 2214, that bias pivot. That's why I've got it marked in red. Man, that was a hell of an uh, area that you got in. I would be looking in here, but obviously, here's the deal. With spoos under pressure, this market is still having a tough time. It's what you want to go and pull out of the trade. If you think this is a pretty decent area for the spoos overall, you could probably start to, I would probably, you could probably take some of it off right here. The only thing with the, with the dollar yen is they may want to just see if they can push past this low and gun a few people because don't forget we're in a Friday. So you might, it, it depends on what you want to get out of the trade. The, the key area right now is going to be here, right there. 2175, but that's way above the market. It depends on what you, I mean, you don't want to give it, you don't want to have it stop so close that they take you out. If it's that close, then you might as well just jump out. But there's some nice support in here, right there, the 2139. It's just a matter of if the, if the, if the spoons continue lower, that's going to keep the pressure on the dollar yen. So you're going to have, what I, I, my, the key markers here is going to be this 21 and 2130. And just below that is 21.17. I would be taking a good, if you want to ride it, I definitely would be taking a decent amount off of 21.17. Or at least take one of them. If you're saying, no, no, I want to ride it, then I would because I think you'll see some decent support here at this 21.17. But that's why I brought that up here since you had asked about it. So let's go move this up here. And then in, tie it in with the crude oil. Here's the dollar CAD. I posted a chart yesterday from 2004. There's a, a weekly level ridge, which is at 36.50. So one of the things that um, 36.50, I think it's 36, 36, six, yeah, 36.60. Okay. The only thing is, and and dollar CAD is way up here, and you know, like I said, no one's going to fight it on a Friday. But I think that you ought to keep this that area in mind, the 3660. Um, what you could do is when we come into next week, just to see how it reacts. Are we still adding on the gains? Because that's a pretty good key level, that 3660. It's like a ridge that came in about the latter part of spring of 2004 into the first part of summer or midsummer. I'd keep an eye on it to see. I mean, you definitely don't want to be saying – my thing is, I think that we should already be at 137 in light of where crude is. But one thing about the dollar CAD and any other market, uh, you know, once it gets trending, it's trending, it's making new highs. But I would keep this as a marker because I think we should have blown through and should have been above 37. So I would just keep that as a marker and just keep that 3660 in mind and see what it's doing next week. If it starts kind of fading out, everything thinking, okay, maybe this is all she wrote. I'm not sure if we can take another leg down in crude. Crude is definitely under pressure, but don't forget, we've got that key weekly support at 36.56. Now, we're below it, but the day's not over. And it's not like they're accelerating. Yeah, I mean, if you're scalping it or day trading, you probably felt like they're accelerating when it's at 36.12. And we're definitely under a lot of pressure because we still got the sell signal on the 30 minutes. But like I said, the day's not over yet. So, Keep an eye on this because there's a very key weekly level at 36.60. I mean, don't necessarily want to be shortening it going into a Friday, uh, which would be a strong weekly close, but I definitely keep that in the back of my mind, 36.60. I can't emphasize that enough because with crude and Brent breaking down, I just feel like the dollar cat right now should be above 137. And that 2004 ridge at 136.60 is pretty key, so just keep that in mind. I told you the crew, I didn't think Euro would back down, and it's not backing down. And we, we looked at that from a day trading standpoint of how that was set up to not fail in all likelihood. Also, when you consider the backdrop of crude and spoos and DAX, uh, gold's trying to hold its own here at 1,065. I'm not going to be talking about um, Yeah, 1,065 here. But let's go on and move into uh, – the euro, and we'll take a quick look at the DAX. As I told you, we're going to start following the DAX and the boon uh, a little bit closer here. So hang on one second. Let's switch into those charts.
Don says, did you ever see Oasis Live? No, but there's a, there's a, a thought that they're going to get back together for 2016, and if they do, if they come to the States, I'm flying wherever the frickin' place is, whether it's New York, L.A., Dallas, or if we were fortunate enough for them to come down to San Antonio, but I'm frickin' seeing Oasis. Um, okay, and... He asked, what are the resistance levels in crude? Well, we, we covered it, and we'll, we'll look at it real quick, though. We'll look at it real quick. And we just basically emphasized that already, but we'll go in and cover it, since you're asking. And, you know, I, like I said, you have to keep things in perspective. 36.56 is a very key weekly level. But even on the 30-minute, you can see that, Okay, like we'll look here before we jump into crew into Euro back to Euro. You can see that we got this sell signal, and we showed this here on Wednesday, and we talked about this. This is when the market ran up, and I was tweeting out about don't be a sucker, about you know, basically getting out at thirty six sixty two, and I did go on and, and tweet out that, you know, I'm flat as we came down here said I'm flat out of everything, and um. Yeah, I thought about shortening, but my target was 39.30. So, but the way it was acting, because I, I, we talked about this yesterday, that it was key that it didn't take out 39. But it was going against my plan, considering that I thought we could we could retrace back up to 39.30, and we didn't. <clears throat> but you look here on the 30 minute, we got the sell signal, and all it did was kiss kiss the slower EMA, and look at that the pressures remained. And until that turns around, <clears throat> it's still under pressure. I mean, you can scalp it, you can scalp it for the long side, scalp it for the short side, but it's hard for a market to put a bottom on a Friday when it's under that kind of pressure. Your key mark is that it's all about, to me, it's all about 36.56, that key weekly level. If you can't take that out, then obviously we're just going to work that work a little bit lower. I would be judicious now on the, on the 30 minute, it's 36.65. I think if you get above 36.65, because that'll be above the 56. 3650, 36.65 later in the U.S. session could launch this market. Think of this, it would be a launch of short covering. That's all it would be. And then if we move into the two-hour chart, it comes into 36.51. <clears throat> to me, I think you're going to see a short-term bottom if on a two-hour close we get above 36.93, which probably sounds pretty simple now, but you can see the ridge here at 36.93. We get above that because you don't want to get stopped out like this. This is why I'm saying it's important to get a close because look what happened here. Anybody who bought then got screwed and the market went lower. So be, especially as much pressure there's on the downside, if you get a two hour close above 36.93, then we'll have a bottom in place. It'll only be a temporary bottom, but what the heck, it's still a bottom. So let's go and move into the, into the euro. And the key thing is don't, don't, Put forecasts, just go and say, if it does this, then we think that. If it does that, then we think that. If that's the best way to do to trade these uh, markets. Don't come in with any ideas that you think uh, it'll, it'll definitely go here, it'll definitely go there. Just let the market dictate to you where you think it will go. We don't have much time. Blake should be coming in. 